Improved was the best way to describe the 1988 Tampa Bay Buccaneers. A team truly on the rise. And he fires in. Carrier at the 45 40. Gets outside 25. Cuts back to the third. The Bucs featured a talented young quarterback with explosive arm strength and a tough young defense that gets better with experience. This is a team capable of producing head over heels excitement. Out of the eye, Tate, and he spins over the top, stays on his feet! The sure improvement of the Bucks is due mainly to a man who has rebuilt the team in his tough competitive image, head coach Ray Perkins. We grew in a lot of different ways that were not reflected in the one loss record. We finished up the season a lot stronger than what we started it. And in the last eight games, we made a lot more progress in most every area of our football team than we did in the first eight. So that's very encouraging to me. This progress makes it clear that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are moving up. In 1988, the plan of attack for Ray Perkins' Bucks could be summed up in the phrase, don't give up the ship. Trailing by 17 points against the Phoenix Cardinals, Benny Testaverde led a 21-point second-half comeback that nearly salvaged a victory. The Bucks rallied to a 24-23 fourth-quarter lead, but while they would eventually fall in the final minutes, the message was clear. This team would not quit. Improvement was also evident as Tampa Bay slugged it out with the Saints. After giving up 13 first-quarter points, the Bucks defense shut out the Saints the rest of the way during a tough-to-take 13-9 loss. In a sub-zero late-season loss that was decided in overtime, a tenacious Bucks defense stopped rookie sensation John Stevens cold, gaining just 10 yards. Another close call came at the hands of Dan Marino and the Dolphins, who were kept in check for most of the day. Backup quarterback Joe Ferguson, number 12, fired a pair of fourth quarter touchdown passes. But it wasn't enough as the Bucks lost 17 to 14. But of all the close calls, few were as disappointing as the one that got away in Minnesota. Like so many of their games, this was a competitive contest in which the Bucks could have won, but simply ran out of time. Fires, carrier caught, tight fights, and Touchdown, Tampa Bay outgained and outplayed Minnesota, but trailing 14 to 13 with 15 seconds remaining, they were down to Vinny's wing and a prayer of a pass. Estaverde fires long, and this one is tipped, and Zarek's so got it at the 21. But can they stop the clock? Can they get, get down the there quickly? You Wait. can't stop the clock. Five, Five seconds. seconds. While time simply ran out in Minnesota, other moments proved they were heading in the right direction like their first win of the season. Three seconds to go on the clock. It's all up to Iggy. The kick is up, and it is good! And the Buccaneers have beaten the Green Bay Packers 13 to 10. The rematch with Green Bay and Tampa Stadium was a spirited affair that exploded with big plays by both the offense and defense. Randy Wright looking left, ball is tipped up in the air, intercepted! Fires, Hill, touchdown! The Bucks tied the game at 24 with only minutes to play. Then after the defense got the ball back, Testaverde came through with the game on the line to put the Bucks in position to win. This exciting shootout would again be decided by Donald Ikwebuike, who once again proved to be the Packers' worst nightmare. 17 seconds 
seconds to go. This for the win. The kick is up, and it is good! He did it! What a game! What a game! This exciting 27-24 victory once again showcased the talents of place kicker Donald Igwebuike. I think Donald is a great kicker. He's a very high percentage field goal kicker. He's got an exceptionally strong leg. I think Donald is one of the best kickers in the league, and I think he's very important to our football team. Igwe Buike won three games in the final seconds and booted three field goals of over 50 yards. Kickoff returner Donnie Elder, number 40, averaged nearly 23 yards a return to rank as the NFC's best. Punt returner Bobby Futrell, number 36, ranked third in the NFC and often performed escapes that only Houdini himself would have dreamed of. Futrell and Elder also led the kick coverage teams, which, driven by youth and spirit, were an encouraging aspect all season long. When Vinny Testaverde joined the Bucks in 1987, there was no question that he already possessed all of the physical talents to become a great quarterback. In 1988, number 14 demonstrated a big play ability that suggests he will soon be one. In his first full season as a starting NFL quarterback, Testaverde improved each Sunday and demonstrated leadership that will guide the Bucks for seasons to come. He passed for 3,240 yards and 13 touchdowns, and his overall athletic ability gave the Bucks offense flexibility. Vinny has an unusual combination of physical talents. He has an exceptionally strong arm, he's got great touch, he knows when to put touch on the ball. He's got great height, uh, he's got great vision of the field. The height helps him have vision, but his vision is great as far as seeing things on the field. And mentally, he is a football guy. He understands football, he understands defenses, he understands what you're trying to do with certain things. He's easy to coach, he's a hard worker, and you know, for these combination of reasons, it's why I have no doubt that he'll be a great player. Perkins watched his young and talented passer struggle by throwing 35 interceptions. But through it all, number 14 could never be faulted for his effort. I think he did learn a lot of things. I think he progressed very, very well in most areas. I thought in a lot of situations where he could have lost a little bit from a poise standpoint and a composure standpoint, he maintained the great poise and the composure and still fought and competed. Against the Indianapolis Colts, Testaverde rebounded from a disastrous start to lead the Bucks back from a 35 to 10 deficit. Totally in control, number 14 passed for 469 yards, the 10th highest in NFL history, and led the Bucks' offense to three fourth quarter touchdowns. From the shotgun, Testa Verde fires for Bruce Hill. Touchdown, Buccaneers! Bruce Hill! And Vinny is back to pass, fires out to Hill. He's got a touchdown, Buccaneers! Though the Bucks' comeback fell just short, 35 to 31, Testaverde had earned the respect of teammates like tackle Paul Gruber. Uh, I think his potential is unlimited. I just think he's going to be one of the greatest, if not the greatest quarterback in a matter of time. Well, I think as the year went on, um, I got used to being uh, with my teammates, working with them, and then with me, and uh, it just seemed to get better towards the end, especially the, the last few games. Uh, we played well together, and um, if we can just carry that over into, into camp and into preseason through the season, uh, a lot of good things are going to come from it. Testaverde took advantage of a young and talented pass-catching core that was headed by receivers Mark Carrier 
and Bruce Hill, number 84. In only his second NFL season, Hill caught 58 passes for 1,040 yards and nine touchdowns. Like Hill, who was in his second NFL season, Mark Carrier, number 88, caught 57 passes for 970 yards and five touchdowns. Carrier's sure hands and elusive open field running blended well with the rest of the Bucks receivers. Number 80, Frank Pillow, was a comforting target, along with Don Smith, Jeff Parks, and Greg Richardson. Over the middle, tight end Ron Hall, number 82, was a big, inviting target who could make the difficult catches look easy, even in a crowd. Ron Hall's toughness fit right in with the rest of an offensive line that was anchored by rookie tackle Paul Gruber, number 74, who was a rock-solid fixture on the left side of the line. Gruber, Pro Bowl alternate Randy Grimes at center, and tackles Rob Taylor, Tom McHale, and Mark Cooper, and guards Rick Mallory, Dan Turk, and John Bruin became a dependable blocking unit that not only bought time for Vinny, but also tore open holes for running back James Wilder, number 32. Though slowed by late season injuries, Wilder averaged over four yards each time he carried the football. And he was the experienced runner in a backfield that included two rookies. Number 34, Lars Tate. And number 43, William Howard. Howard was the Bucks' second leading rusher behind Tate, number 34, who gained most of his yardage by slugging it out with the defense. Tate also scored seven touchdowns, sometimes by turning a short yardage play into an improbable scoring run. The combination of Lars Tate and William Howard proved to be too much for the Lions to handle in the Detroit Silverdome, as this rushing tandem helped the Bucks roll up 225 yards on the ground. It was the sixth highest rushing total in team history. Howard bangs off of one tackler, stays on his feet to the 25-20, 15, 10, 5, and he dives! Touchdown, Buccaneers! But while the ground attack controlled the contest, the passing game led by Vinny Testaverde provided the field position to win it. Tied at 20 in the final minute of play, Bruce Hill's clutch catch and run set Igwe Buike up to win the game with 10 seconds remaining. And Iggy's kick is up. It's drifting. It's drifting. It is good! He did it! 52-yard field goal! This 23-20 win was further proof that this team is going places. A late surge by the Buck defense was one of the most encouraging developments in 1988. Their improvement was week to week and play to play. And their ability to hit as a team allowed them to lead the NFL in fewest yards allowed per rush. Their secret was teamwork. Ron Holmes, number 90, containing the sweep. And number 79, Reuben Davis, cutting it down and forcing a fumble. 
strong safety, Mark Robinson. It's definitely a team-oriented defense. You know, not having a sole player who's just the greatest thing on the team, having a lot of people working together, a team unit like that, I think that that's key, and I think that we can really use that in the upcoming year. Together or solo, the Bucks played with an aggressive nature that was instilled by three veterans who were obtained from other teams. Eugene Marv, Mark Robinson, and Harry Hamilton, number 39. I think those three did more than anything else or anybody else to tie that group together. Those players, because of their years in the league, gave us some veteran leadership that we direly needed. Number 99, Marr was rock solid at inside linebacker. And free safety Hamilton led the club with six interceptions. Strong safety Mark Robinson rounded out the trio. The young defense also received valuable contributions from improving young veterans like number 95, nose tackle Kurt Jarvis. Ron Holmes, number 90. Linebackers Kevin Murphy and Winston Moss, number 57. And cornerback Ricky Reynolds, number 29. The rookie class was outstanding. Defensive end Robert Goff, number 94, was dominating at times. And in reserve, number 97, Sean Lee showed a good feel for the pass pocket. But the biggest surprise was the play of number 79, Reuben Davis, who began the season as a long shot to make the team and ended up in the starting lineup. We were just very surprised, to put it simply, uh, take a ninth round draft choice out of North Carolina, and he plays like Reuben Davis played last year. I think he's got a chance to be a premier player in this league. But we had uh, several other young players, you know, Sidney Coleman, an inside linebacker, and Odie Harris with strong safety, uh, both free agents that came along and have a chance to be really fine players. We have the potential of being a really fine defensive football team. Certainly the way that we finished up the year and some of the evidence from a statistical standpoint, that they can see, feel, touch, read, and know that they did well toward the end of the year, I think is a big boost for us uh, uh, coming up for 1989. The Bucks finished up the 1988 season by winning two of their final three games and finally getting a grasp on what it takes to win in the NFL. Against the Detroit Lions in week 16, the Bucks were a vastly improved team from the one that had started the NFL season. Veterans John Cannon and Mark Robinson made big plays for a defense that all but shut down the Lions' offense. And Benny Testaverde passed the Bucks to a 21-10 victory. Testaverde to throw long for Hill. He's got it! Touchdown, Buccaneers! Caught at the five, and he takes it into the end zone! Testaverde tries to throw, fires in, and caught! This will be a touchdown! Take it in all the way, caught at the 20, and Mark Carey... But while ending on a winning note was nice, Tampa Bay's most impressive performance came just two weeks earlier against the Buffalo Bills, who were on their way to the AFC Championship game. This was a day for the Bucks to show how far they had come. The Bucks pounded anything that moved and their offense used deception as well as muscle. Play fake, bootleg, Fetty will score! It's a touchdown, Buccaneers! Holy mackerel! Tampa Bay's offense managed to score 10 points against one of the NFL's best defenses. And on a day dominated by fierce hitting, it was all they needed. Late in the third quarter, the Bills were inside the Bucks' 10-yard line and threatening to tie the score until an inspiring call went up from the Bucks' faithful. Defensive end Reuben Davis. Until then, we never really had that much uh, noise in the stadium. It was incredible. Our heads were ringing inside those helmets. It's like a 12th man on the field, and we sort of had that that weekend. I could just sense, you know, the people feeling that, you know, things are going to come out of the defense. On third down, Harry Hamilton saved a touchdown. And suddenly, it was down to one big play. Uh, 
basically what we had there was fourth and one. Irvin around the pool to stay together and said, you know, this is where we start as far as building on Nate shift. Young guys got to pull your own weight and uh, let's get down in the dirt, let's play ball. Yeah, it's Riddick and he's he did. I don't think he got it. Nope. I believe he was stopped. He did not get up in the air and the Bucks take over. On the final play of this goal line stand, a young football team learned what it takes to win in the NFL. For the fans who helped to fuel this emotional stand, it was a moment that suggested that there are great days ahead for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This was further illustrated late in the fourth quarter as the defense stifled one final threat. Kelly fires and it's intercepted at the 20, 30, 40, Mark Robinson. And out of bounds, the Bucs have the ball, Mark Robinson. Beating the Bills was a positive lesson for a team that is still learning. When you're a young team, one of the hurdles that you want to get over is beating a really fine football team. That hurdle tells them, hey, we can compete. I think it was a big boost. It really showed us, along with the media, what we could really do if we really would play. They didn't lie down and die. They wanted to win that game just as much as anybody. And so I think it was re it's real important. You need to beat the good teams in order to go to, to the Super Bowl. And I think, you know, it's a step in the right direction. We've come an awful long way. And uh, I was teasing with Vinny the other day, and I said, hey, we've come a long way, baby, but we've still got a ways to go. I don't think we're that far away from being a pretty good football team. I don't have any question but what we're headed in the right direction. I think our players see that. I think our players know that.